Hello students, welcome to our video lecture on mechanical properties of fluids part 2 of chapter number 10 of physics for class 11. In this video, we will study about Bernoulli's principle and viscosity. Daniel Bernoulli, who lived from 1700 to 1782, was a Swiss scientist and mathematician who, along with Leonard Euler, had the distinction of winning the French Academy Prize for mathematics 10 times. He also studied medicine and served as a professor of anatomy and botany for a while at Basle, Switzerland. His most well-known work was in hydrodynamics, a subject he developed from a single principle, that is, the conservation of energy. His work included calculus probability, the theory of vibrating strings and applied mathematics. He has been called the founder of mathematical physics. As you know, fluid flow is a complex phenomenon, but we can obtain some useful properties for steady or streamlined flows using the principle of conservation of energy. All these things will be explained in following sections. Please note down the important point that is possible if you listen my lecture very carefully and repeat it. So, I welcome you once again. Bernoulli's theorem. This theorem was developed by Swiss physicist Daniel Bernoulli in the year 1738. It states that the total energy, that is the sum of Pressure energy capital P, potential energy capital U, and kinetic energy capital K per unit volume or per unit mass of an incompressible and non viscous fluid in a steady flow through a pipe remains constant throughout the flow. To understand this phenomena, consider a fluid moving in a pipe of varying cross-sectional area as shown in the figure on the right hand side. We now suppose that an incompressible fluid is flowing through this pipe in a steady flow. Its velocity must change as a consequence of equation of continuity. A force is required to produce this acceleration which is caused by the fluid surrounding it. The pressure must be different in different regions. Bernoulli's equation is a general expression that relates the pressure difference between two points in a pipe to both velocity changes, that is, change in kinetic energy and the change in height. Therefore, by the statement of Bernoulli, the sum that is P plus rho GH plus half rho V square must be a constant. This is stated math mathematically by equation shown on the figure. Let it be equation 1. Then if we consider it as a unit mass, we have to divide it by rho. Therefore, P by rho plus GH plus half V square is equal to constant. Again dividing by the above equation 2 by g that is acceleration due to gravity we get p by gp g rho plus h plus v square by 2g equals constant. Here p by rho g that is the first term on the left hand side is called the pressure head and h is called the gravitational head and v square by 2g is called the velocity head. Now we will derive the Bernoulli's equation. This is done by considering two regions. Here 
the flow of an ideal fluid in a pipe of varying cross section is shown on this figure as said earlier. The fluid in a suction length V1 delta T, here V1 delta T moves to the suction of length V2 into delta T. Hence, the work done on the fluid at BC, this is the suction BC is equal to P1A1 into V1 delta T. That is equal to P1 into delta V because A1, A1 into V1 delta T is delta V. That is volume. Therefore, the work done by fluid at delta E, DE, that is at the, at the other end of the capillary, the, the tube is given by W2 is equal to P2 A2 V2 into delta T. In, that is equal to P2 delta V. Therefore, the work done on the fluid is minus P2 into delta V. That is the difference between the two is W1 minus W2 is equal to P1 minus P2 into delta V. If the density of the fluid is rho and delta M equals rho A1, V1 delta T, that is equal to rho into delta V, is the mass passing through the pipe, pipe in the time delta T, then the change in gravitational potential energy is delta U is equal to rho G into delta V into H2 minus H1. That is H2 is the height at, for the region DE and H1 is the height of BC. The change in kinetic energy therefore is given by delta K is equal to rho into delta V into V2 square minus V1 square. Applying the work energy theorem and simplifying we get P2 minus P1, P1 minus P2 is equal to half into rho into V2 square minus V1 square plus Pg in, into H2 minus H1. We can further rearrange this equation to obtain the relation P1 plus half into rho V1 square plus rho GH1 equals P2 into half rho V2 square plus rho GH2. Let this be equation 3. This is called Bernoulli's equation. Please work out step by step the derivation of Bernoulli's equation. Speed of efflux. The word efflux means fluid outflow. Torricelli discovered that the speed of efflux from an open tank is given by the formula which is identical to that of a freely falling body. And the relationship that is the velocity of efflux from a hole made at a depth h below the free surface of the liquid is given by v1 is equal to square root of 2 gh where v1 is the velocity and h is the height and g is the acceleration due to gravity this is same as the speed of a falling object from rest through a height h. Now consider a tank containing a liquid of density rho with a small hole in, the, in its side at a height y1. This is y1 from the bottom. y1 from the bottom. The air above the liquid, this is the air above the liquid, whose surface is at a height h2, y2, sorry, y2 is at pressure p. Thus, the speed of a flux from the side of container is given by the application of Bernoulli's equation. Applying the Bernoulli's equation at points 1, this is the point 1, and at point 2, and noting that 
P1. This is P1 is equal to Pa. That is atmospheric pressure. We have from the Bernoulli's equation Pa plus half rho V1 square plus P rho G Y1 is equal to P plus rho G into Y2. This is P. On the left, on the left hand side is the relationship at point V. Point 1 that is Pa atmospheric pressure plus half rho into V1 square velocity at this point 1 V1 square plus rho G Y1. This is the y, Y1 equals the term on the right hand side is the pressure at point P2 that is point 2 that is P plus rho G into height is Y2. Let it be equation 1. Therefore, rearranging, we get rho v1 square is equal to 2p minus 2pa plus 2 rho g y2 minus 2 rho g y1. Substituting y2 minus y1 is equal to h and simplifying, we get v1 is equal to square root of 2gh plus 2 into P minus P A divided by rho. That is, let it be equation 2. Therefore, point number 1 is, if P is far, far greater than P A in equation 2 and ignoring 2 G H, we get the speed of flux is the container pressure. That is, P A neglect and we will get square root of 4 P and that becomes square root of 2 P is P. That is, ignoring to it, the speed of flux is the container pressure. Suppose in this equation 2, tank is open to the atmosphere, P is equal to P A. Therefore, the, within the square root, this second term becomes 0. Therefore, V1 will be equal to square root of 2GH. The equation 3 represents the Torricelli's law, which is also the speed of freely falling body. Here, the question in your examination may be, <coughs> state and prove Torricelli's theorem for velocity of F flux. You have to write, the, the, define the Torricelli's laws, make a statement and prove it. This will have two marks question. Maybe you explain it using the diagram on the left hand side. Venturi meter. The venturi meter is a device to measure the flow speed of incompressible fluid. It consists of a tube broad diameter and a small constriction at the middle as shown in the figure. So the broad diameter is this end and the constriction is at the middle is at this end, at the middle. A manometer in the form of an U-tube is also attached to it with one arm at the broad neck point of the tube and the other at constriction as shown in the figure. So that is this end 1 is at the broad diameter end and 2 end 2 is near the constriction. The manometer consists of a liquid of density rho m and its speed v1 of the liquid flowing through the tube at the broad end neck area capital A is to be measured. So we have to measure the speed of the liquid flowing through the tube at end A. And this we can measure it using equation of continuity. Please refer chapter number 10 part 1 wherein we had derived equation of continuity as APVP equals ARVR equals AQVQ. The speed at the constriction becomes V2 is equal to capital A by small a into V1. 
Then using Bernoulli's equation, we can write the equation as Pa plus half rho V1 square plus rho G Y1 equals P plus rho G Y2 as we had derived in the previous slide. And if we put H1 is equal to H2, we get the relation, the above equation, Bernoulli's equation, we can write it as P1 plus half rho V1 square is equal to P2 plus half rho V1 square into A by capital A by small a whole square. Therefore, P1 minus P2, rearranging P1 minus P2 is equal to half rho V1 square into A by A whole square minus 1. So, this term, second term on the left hand side is taken on the right hand and we are taking half rho V1 square as a common factor and simplifying we get this equation. Therefore, this pressure difference that is P1 minus P2 causes the flu fluid in U tube connected at the narrow neck to rise in comparison to the other arm. That means the, the pressure, the pressure difference between the two causes the liquid to rise in comparison to the other arm. The difference in height H measures the pressure difference. Therefore, P1 minus P2 is equal to rho m into gh that is equal to half of rho v1 square into a by capital A by small a whole square minus 1. This is whole square. Please note that this is not into 2 but it is a whole square. Therefore, the speed of fluid at the wide neck that is the speed of liquid at wide neck v1 is given by square root of 2 rho m gh divided by rho into a by a whole square minus 1 to the power of minus half. This is also under root. That means we are retaining this equation v and we are calculating rho m gh this is cross multiplying into 2 that is 2 into rho m gh divided by rho this is denominator square root of then into square root of a by a whole square minus 1. This is the principle of working principle of Venturi meter. Applications of Bernoulli's theorem. The principle behind the Venturi meter has many applications. The carburetor of automobile has a Venturi channel that is nozzle through which air flows with a high speed. The pressure is then lowered at the narrow neck and the petrol that is gasoline is sucked up in the chamber to provide the correct mixture of air to fuel necessary for combustion. Filter pumps or aspirators, Bunsen burner, automizers and sprayers used for perfumes or spray insecticide work on these principles. It has also applications in blood flow and heart attack devices. Bernoulli's principle helps in explaining blood flow in artery. The artery may get constricted due to accumulation of plaque on its inner walls. In order to derive the blood through this constriction, a greater demand is placed on the activity of heart. The speed of flow of the blood in this region is raised, which lowers the pressure inside the and the artery may collapse due to external pressure. The heart exerts further pressure to open this artery and forces the blood through. As the blood rushes through the opening, 
the internal pressure once again drops due to same reason leading to the repeat collapse. This may result in heart attack. It is also used in dynamic lift. Dynamic lift is the force that acts on a body such as airplane wing, a hydrofoil or a spinning ball by virtue of its motion through a fluid. In many games such as cricket, tennis balls, baseballs or golf, we notice that spinning ball deviates from its parabolic trajectory as it moves through the air. The deviation can be partly explained on the basis of Bernoulli's principles. Then there are two subheads that is the ball moving with you know, without spin and the ball moving with spin. Then there is also a Magnus effect. When a spinning ball is thrown, it deviates from its usual path in the flight. This effect is called the Magnus effect. That is the Magnus effect is the deviation from its usual path in the flight. Then aerofoil or lift on the aircraft wing. Please see the figure on the top right hand side which shows an aerofoil which is the solid piece shaped to provide an upward dynamic lift when it moves horizontally through the air. Then we also explain the atomizer. The carburetor of automobile has a venturi channel as explained earlier through which air flows and this is also shown in the figure. The pressure is then lowered at the narrow neck and the petrol is sucked up in the chamber to provide the correct ratio of air to fuel for combustion. Filter pumps, aspirators, Bunsen burner and atomizers, sprayers etc. also used as said earlier. Then we have other phenomena such as, such as blowing of roofs by wind storms, attraction between two closely parallel moving boats etc etc hence there are wide range of applications of Bernoulli's theorem. Now we move on to next section 10.5 where we will discuss about the viscosity. Most of the fluids are not ideal ones and offer some resistance to motion. This resistance to motion is like an internal friction analogous to the friction when a solid moves on the surface. It is called viscosity. Viscosity is the property of the fluid by virtue of which it opposes the relative motion between adjacent layers and the force between layers opposing the relative motion is called viscous force. It is the fluid friction or the internal friction. The figure on the left hand side shows a layer of liquid sandwiched between two parallel glass plates. These are the two glass plates and it is a layer of liquid is sandwiched between the two in which the lower plate is fixed. This lower plate is fixed and the upper one is moving to right with a velocity v with a velocity v v and in the b sec in the in this figure below the velocity distribution for viscous flow in a pipe is also shown these figures help us to understand the principles of viscosity Newton's law of viscosity. The viscous force F is proportional to the area of the plane A and the velocity gradient dv by dx. So dv by dx is the velocity gradient in a direction normal to the layer. Hence F is equal to minus eta into A into dv by dx where eta 
represented by the symbol eta is a constant called, called coefficient of viscosity. The negative sign here is employed to, to, to represent the viscous force which acts in a direction opposite to the flow of liquid. The unit of viscosity is dynes second per centimeter square or poise, that is poise in CGS system. And in SI system, its unit is Newton second per meter square or poise or decapoise. Decapoise, decapoise, that is in SI unit. One poise equals one decapoise is equal to 10 poise. Dimensions of viscosity are m into l to the power of minus 1 t to the power of minus 1. With increase in pressure, the viscosity of fluid or liquids increases while that of gases is independent of pressure. That is, I will read once again, with increase in pressure, the viscosity of liquids except water increases while that of gases is independent of pressure. The viscosity of water decreases with increase in pressure. Point number four, the solid friction is independent of the area of the surfaces in contact and the relative velocity between them. Viscosity represents transport of momentum while diffusion and conduction represent transport of mass and energy respectively. The viscosity of gases increases with increase in temperature. The viscosity of liquid decreases with increase in temperature. These are the several properties of viscosity. Stokes law and terminal velocity. When a body falls through a fluid, it drags the layer of the fluid in contact with it. A relative motion between the different layers of fluid is set and as a result, the body experiences a retarding force. For example, falling of a raindrop and swinging of a pendulum bob are some common examples of such motion. It is seen that the viscous force is proportional to the velocity of the object and is opposite to the direction of motion. Sir George E. Stokes, who lived from 1819 to 1903, an English scientist, initiated clearly the viscous drag force F as F is equal to 6 pi eta into R into V, where F is the force, eta is the coefficient of viscosity, R is the radius of the sphere and V is the velocity. This equation 1 shown on the screen is called Stokes law. The derivation of Stokes law is not in the scope of this syllabus. This law is an interesting example of retarding force which is proportional to the velocity. The terminal velocity is also associated with the Stokes law. When a spherical body of radius r is dropped in a viscous fluid, it is first accelerated and then its acceleration becomes zero and it attains a constant velocity called 
terminal velocity. If rho is the density of the sphere and sigma is the density of fluid, then at equilibrium, the force Fb plus Ft equals W. That is, work that is equal to the body's force and terminal velocity. That can be given in terms of physical, other physical quantities as for sphere, it is a 4 by 3 pi r cube sigma into g plus 6 pi eta into v vt equals 4 by 3 pi r cube into rho g. <coughs> Therefore, Vt can be written as Vt is equal to, simplifying the above equation, Vt is equal to 2 by 9 r square into rho minus sigma over eta into g. So, here V suffix t is the terminal velocity. So, so we will examine some special cases for variation of density of the body as well as the density of fluid. Case number one is if rho in this equation 2 is greater than sigma, then the body will attain constant velocity in the downward direction. Case two is if rho is less than sigma, that is, the density of sphere is less than the density of fluid, then the body will attain constant velocity in upward direction. Example, air bubble in a liquid and clouds in sky. The table on the right hand side shows the viscosity at different temperature of different fluid. For example, water at 20 degrees centigrade has a viscosity of 1.0 MPL, whereas the same water when heated to 100 degrees, its viscosity is 0.0. Three. Blood has at a temperature 37 degrees, that is the body temp normal body temperature, viscosity is 2.7. Machine oil at 16 degrees has got viscosity of 113, whereas machine oil, same machine oil at 38 degrees has a viscosity of 34. You please note the vast differences. Glycerin at 20 degrees is viscosity is 830. Honey is viscosity, honey's viscosity is 200 degrees centigrade. 200 viscosity is 200. Air at 0 degrees is 0 0.017 and at 40 degrees is 0.019. Just to study the comparative. The figure also shows the relationship between the time or a distance versus the terminal velocity. So the parabolic curve is shown. On the x-axis it is r and on the vertical axis it is terminal velocity. Questions and answer. We will take up some work examples to understand the concepts of the mechanical properties of fluids. First is regarding blood velocity. The flow of blood in a large artery of an anesthetized dog is diverted through a venturi meter. The wider part of the meter has a cross-sectional area equal to that of artery. 
that is capital A is equal to 8 mm square. The narrower part has an area small a is equal to 4 mm square. The pressure drop in artery is 24 pascals. What is the speed of the blood in the artery? So certain quantities are given and we are required to find the speed of the blood in the artery. Let us take up the answer. The ratio of the areas is A by capital A by small a is equal to 2. Using the formula, we have to remember the formula for the speed of fluid at the wide neck is as V1 is equal to square root of within brackets 2 rho m g h divided by rho into a by a whole square minus 1 close the bracket to the power of minus half. This is to the power of minus half. It has to appear here. Hence, substituting the values, 2 into rho m g h is equal to 24 pascals and the value of rho is 1060 kg meter cube into this value is 2 square minus, that is a by a is 2, 2 square minus 1 whole to the power of half and that is also taken inside minus half is taken inside and simplifying we get 0 0.123 meters per second. You please do it and write it step by step. Next question we will take up about an Boeing aircraft. A fully loaded Boeing aircraft has a mass of 3.3 .3 into 10 to the power of 5 kgs. Its total wing area is 500 meters square. It is in level flight with a speed of 960 kilometers per hour. Now question is part A. Estimate the pressure difference between the lower and upper surface of the wings. Part B. Estimate the fractional increase in the speed of the air on the upper surface of the wing relative to the lower surface. The density of air is rho is equal to 1.2 kgs per meter cube. There are certain given quantities you please write down all the given quantities and we will start answering answer the weight of boeing aircraft is balanced by the upward force due to pressure difference we can write the pressure difference delta p into a that is equal to 3.3 .3 into 10 to the power of 5 kgs into 9.8 Therefore, delta P is equal to 3.3 .3 into 10 to the power of 5 kgs into 9.8 meters per second square divided by 500 meters per meter square. That is equal to 6.5 into 10 cube newtons per square. This is the answer for part A. Next part B. Ignoring the small height difference H1 and H2 in the equation, in this equation, if we take H1 is equal to H2, both the terms on the, the third term on the left hand side and the third term on the right hand side get cancelled. Hence, the pressure difference delta P is given by delta P is equal to rho by 2 into V2 square minus V1 square or Simplifying and solving for V2 minus V1, we can write V2 minus V1. That is here using the formula A plus B into A minus B and retaining A minus B on the left hand side, we get V2 minus V1 is equal to 2 into delta P divided by rho into V2 plus V1. Where V2 is the speed of air over the upper surface and V1 is the speed under the bottom surface. 
Therefore, the average speed is given by V2 plus V1 by 2. That is equal to, that is given as 960 kilometers per second, per hour, sorry, 960 kilometers per hour. That is equal to 267 meters per second. So, converting this kilometers into meter, that is into 1000 divided by hours. Our, uh, divided hour to into second is hours into 60 into 60. We get 267 meters per second. You please solve it. That is 960 into 1000 divided by 60 into 60. You will get 267 meters per second. Therefore, V2 minus V1 divided by V average equals 2 into delta P divided by rho into V average square. That is equal to 0 0.08. The speed above the wing needs to be only 8% higher than that of that the below. Next question. Now we will take up another work example. Question number 3. A metal block of area 0 0.1, 0.10 meter square is connected to a 0 0.010 kg mass via a string that passes over an ideal pulley considered to be massless and frictionless as shown in the figure below. A liquid with a film thickness of 0.3 mm is placed between the block and the table as shown in the figure. Here the liquid is placed. When released, the block moves to the right with a constant speed of 0.085 meters per second. Find the coefficient of viscosity of the liquid. The metal block moves to the right because of the tension in the string. The tension T is equal in magnitude to the weight of the suspended mass. Thus, the shear force F is given by the relation. F is equal to T is, T is equal to mg, that is mass into acceleration due to gravity, that is equal to 0.1 kg into 9.8 meters per second square. Simplifying, we get F as 9.8 into 10 to the power of minus 2 newtons. Now, the shear, for, shear stress on the fluid is F by A. So, simplifying, we get 9.8 into 10 to the power of minus 2 divided by A is 0.110 meter square. So we get the value as shear stress is equal to 9.8 into 10 to the power minus 2 divided by 0 0.1 newtons per square. Therefore, strain rate is given by V by L that is equal to 0 0.85 that is the constant speed V is the velocity 0 0.085 divided by 0 0.3 into 10 to the power of minus 3. That is equal to eta, that is stress by strain ratio. Eta is given by 9.8, substituting the values 9.8 into 10 to the power of minus 2 divided by 0 0.1 divided by, it gets inverted, 0 0.8085 meters per second and the denominator here goes to the numerator of this equation that is 0 0.3 into 10 to the power of minus 3 in meters. Simplifying, we get the answer as 3.46 into 10 to the power of minus 3 pascal seconds. This you please write and work out yourself step by step as shown in the figure. Question number 4. The terminal velocity of a copper ball of radius 2, 2 mm falling through a tank oil, tank of oil at 20 degrees centigrade is 6.5 centimeters per second. 
compute the viscosity of the oil at 20 degrees centigrade. Density of oil is 1.5 into 10 to the power of 3 kgs. Kg meet per meter cube. Density of copper is 8.9 kg per meter cube. Let us solve it. Answer. Given V1 is equal to 6.5 into 10 to the power of minus 2 meters per second. R is equal to radius is equal to A2 into 10 to the power of minus 3 meters. G is equal to 9.8 meters per second. Rho is equal to 8.9 into 10 to the power of 3 kg meet per meter cube. Sigma is equal to 1.5 into 10 to the power of 3 kg per meter cube. So we will get, therefore we will get the value as applying the formula Vt is equal to 2 by 9 into r square into sigma minus rho, rho minus sigma over eta into g. I will read the formula once again. Vt is equal to 2 by 9 r square rho minus sigma divided by eta into g. This we have derived in the previous section. Substituting the values, given values, we get the answer as 9.9 .9 into 10 to the power of minus 1 kg per meter per second. These, these are given in detail. You can work out yourself. With this, we come to the end of part 2 of mechanical properties of fluids of chapter number 10. In the next lecture, we will take up the next part, that is part 3, explaining surface tensions as well as we will answer questions of pertaining to the entire chapter number 10. Till then, goodbye.